بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ہوپ دیٹ آل آف یو ول بی فائن اینڈ ان دا بیسٹ اسٹیٹ آف یور ہیلتھ بائی دی بلیسنگز آف آل مائٹی اللہ آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد علی ہاشمی فرام یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن ایٹ اے کیمپس اینڈ وی آر اسٹڈینگ دی سبجیکٹ آف میکنزم آف آرگینک ریئیکشنز In the previous lecture, we studied about uh, the oxidation reactions where a hydrogen is replaced by an oxygen. The current lecture is about reduction reactions which involve replacing an oxygen with a hydrogen atom. So that is uh, totally opposite to the uh, previous lecture. So the main concepts of uh, this uh, lecture which you will learn there would be uh, first an introduction to redox reaction and uh, what is reduction so we'll have a quick look at uh, reduction how reduction is treated in organic chemistry and then different reducing agents the um, main theme of the lecture would be reduction reactions where uh, an uh, oxygen atom is replaced by a hydrogen atom so uh, you will see different classes of compounds where reduction happens and an oxygen atom is replaced by the hydrogen atom so uh, the we have discussed about redox reactions briefly in the previous lecture uh, i'll not go into the details again uh, we'll just very quickly summarize so you remember that in your mind and we continue the discussion for this lecture so in inorganic chemistry redox reactions they are comprising of two parts one is the reduced half and the other one is the oxidized half we already discussed about it so these reactions always they occur together the uh, one por portion of the reaction is getting oxidized and the other portion is getting reduced and there are many ways to remember these uh, we always studies like oil rig oil mean oxidation is loss rig reduction is gain and uh, similarly leo says jer leo means loss of electrons is oxidation and uh, gain of electrons is reduction so we already discussed that there is no net change in the number of electrons in a redox reaction yeah so we come back to the main topic of this lecture in organic chemistry reductions may be defined as addition of hydrogen so what was just recall what was oxidation that was uh, addition of oxygen reduction is opposite to that so it is addition of hydrogen um, oxidation was loss of hydrogen reduction is addition of hydrogen oxidation was addition of oxygen reduction is loss of oxygen similarly in oxidation we studied that addition of halogens may also be termed as oxidation and uh, contrary to that loss of halogens is uh, termed as reduction in organic chemistry so these are different um, definitions that operate at different times uh, in different reaction conditions um, and if you see any of these like you see addition of hydrogen in a reaction you may term that reaction as a reduction reaction similarly if you uh, see that the, an oxygen is getting lost that is also a reduction and uh, in this lecture we will study about the reactions where an oxygen is replaced by a hydrogen so oxygen is replaced mean oxygen is lost and uh, hydrogen is replacing it mean hydrogen is being added so both the first uh, parts of the definition are uh, then um, into practice and you will see that the reactions are reductions we have some very common reducing agents in organic chemistry that are as follows um, the first one is sodium borohydride NaBH4 um, lithium aluminium hydride LiAlH4 and uh, we can also use hydrogen gas over a metal catalyst usually uh, we use palladium for that purposes all these different reducing agents have their own mechanisms of action and uh, they are used where appropriate um, everyone has uh, their specificity in which kind of reactions 
uh, it may be used so we have to decide about uh, about which of uh, the reducing agent we want to use depending on the reaction condition the structure of the reactant and uh, the nature of the groups uh, present in those reactants first is the reduction of alcohols to alkanes you know that alcohols are more oxidized than alkanes and uh, they are less oxidized than the corresponding carbonyl compounds such as ketones and aldehydes let's have a quick look on the oxidation status of these organic molecules um, here so you can see that an alcohol is um, more oxidized than an alkane so towards this side going on the left you see that the, the compounds are reduced and on the right side they're more oxidized so their oxidation states are higher so if you look at uh, alkane it is uh, more reduced and, and an alcohol is more oxidized than an alkane but an alcohol is less oxidized than uh, its corresponding carbonyl part like uh, aldehyde or ketone so reduction of alcohols is usually rare why because it removes the functional group it, it is not just changing uh, the um, some position in the molecule but it's completely removing the functional group but uh, we can definitely accomplish the reduction of alcohol um, if it is really necessary using some common methods so the first method would is um, we can reduce an alcohol in two steps first we dehydrate the alcohol to an alkene and then we do its hydrogenation to make convert into, into an alkane so let's have a look at this example we have a cyclopentanol um, compound this is an alcohol what if we dehydrate it we uh, treat it with uh, sulfuric acid um, and uh, this OH group and this hydrogen on the other carbon on the neighboring carbon they both leave together and, uh, and a double bond is created here so with the loss of a water that is why it is called dehydration a water molecule is lost in this reaction what is the resultant molecule that is an alkene so now we can easily hydrogenate this alkene by using a metal catalyst like palladium or platinum with the in the presence of hydrogen gas and we get an alkane uh, as a product so you can see as the theme of the lecture was that uh, uh, an oxygen atom uh, is replaced by a hydrogen atom in this reaction so this was the oxygen atom of the alcohol which is now replaced with the um, hydrogen atom and uh, we saw that the alcohol is reduced into an alkane The other method for reducing an alcohol uh, involves converting the alcohol to the tosylate ester and then using a hydride reducing agent to displace the tosylate leaving group. So why is that so? This is because uh, alcohol is not a good leaving group. It is not a leaving group at all. So you cannot just uh, um, make some uh, hydride agent to come over here and uh, replace this OH group this OH group is not going to leave we have so for that purpose what we do we convert it into a good leaving group first and then uh, use a hydride reducing agent to reduce this carbon and get the desired product so uh, the best uh, method is to convert this alcohol into a tosylate ester tosyl um, tosylate is uh, a very good leaving group so and it is widely used in organic chemistry so it, this is tosyl chloride so if you remove just if you just remove chloride this whole uh, thing would be called as a tosylate group okay so if we react this alcohol with the tosyl chloride in the presence of pyridine we get cy this cyclohexyl tosylate you see that just the hydrogen of the alcohol is replaced with the tosylate group now tosylate group is a very uh, good leaving group if we use a hydride reducing agent a hydride can come over to this carbon and this tosylate will leave from here 
resulting in an alkane so an alcohol will be converted to an alkane so this reaction works uh, with most of the primary and secondary alcohols let's come to the mechanism of tosylation how the tosylation actually happens a tosylate ester which is symbolized ROTS in the uh, product of condensation of an alcohol with paratoluene sulfonic acid. So, if we re react an alcohol with paratoluene sulfonic acid, we get an alkyl tosylate. So, uh, in this reaction, you see that uh, when paratoluene sulfonic acid condenses with the alcohol, the hydrogen of the alcohol uh, from the OH group is uh, combined with the OH from the paratoluene sulfonic acid and uh, a water molecule is eliminated thus joining the alcohol to the tosylate group and the resultant compound is called an alkyl tosylate. So the tosylate is an excellent leaving group and the nucleophile now which is hydride here that can easily substitute that uh, tosylate so have a look here um, we got this tosylate alkyl tosylate by reacting an alcohol with tosyl chloride or paratoluene sulfonic acid and then we can use any nucleophile in in our case it would be a hydride h negative uh, ion but we can use any other nucleophile here to get a desired product. So if uh, you use a nucleophile that will just uh, attack on this carbon and uh, the OTS group will leave from here and you will have a resultant molecule where uh, uh, if uh, you used a hydride as a nucleophile here would be hydrogen instead of this nucleophile and then you will see that uh, the carbon oxygen bond is replaced by a carbon hydrogen bond and the reduction has taken place in the alcohol so tosylates are made from alcohols using tosyl chloride and pyridine and why we use pyridine because uh, you'll see the significance of pyridine um, just now on this slide uh, so it gives much higher yield uh, if we use tosyl chloride it gives much higher yields than using the tosyl um, this uh, tosyl hydroxide itself so if we use an alcohol with the tosyl chloride how it um, how this reaction works how the alcohol gets attached to the tosylate ester so the o oxygen of alcohol has uh, extra electron density so it attacks on this sulfur atom and chloride you know that chloride is a very good leaving group chloride will leave from here and uh, this alcohol is now attached to the tosylate group so oxygen gets a positive charge which is balanced by the counterine chloride now what is the role of pyridine pyridine will uh, just uh, get that this extra proton from the alcohol and uh, convert this uh, molecule into a tos uh, alkyl tosylate so uh, the it is very important to capture this proton because it can cause many side reactions if uh, it is not properly captured by uh, pyridine molecule so uh, there is one important thing uh, in this reaction if you look at the mechanism of tosylate formation we see that the co bond of the alcohol that remains intact throughout the reaction so this oh bond is broken from the alcohol not the o and the carbon bond so this carbon and oxygen bond remains intact it means that whatever stereochemistry you have here in this R group that will be preserved in this reaction that is very important from an organic synthetic point of view so um, the alcohol retains its stereochemical configuration and pyridine serves as an organic base to remove the HCl formed in the reaction you see that uh, when this uh, hydrogen is here and chlorine here they can form HCl and that HCl can protonate the alcohol and it can cause many other side reactions so uh, pyridine is used to uh, to capture this hydrogen so no HCl is produced now the 
the following reaction shows the SN2 displacement of uh, tosylate uh, from S2 butyl tosylate with the invariant of configuration. So, uh, as I told you that uh, about the stereochemistry, um, that uh, these reactions are beautifully, um, you can control their stereochemistry because you know that the alcohol oxygen bond is not cleaved in the reaction. So, if we have uh, this tosylate uh, ester, uh, which is S2 butyl tosylate, and if you use a nucleophile, let's say iodide, in this case, in this example, we have iodide, but uh, you can use a hydride here and you will get the similar product. So, if you use an iodide, you can see that this is a simple SN2 displacement. Iodide will attack from behind. Um, and towards the leaving group and uh, an inversion of configuration will take place. So, this uh, S carbon will be converted to an R uh, in enchumer, you, an R isomer. You can see um, that uh, by using a hydride here, we can get the respective alkane with an inverted configuration. So, you can um, easily control the stereochemistry in these kind of reactions. And tosylate ion is a very stable ion. Uh, you can see that tosylate ion is generated here. It is very stable because of the delocalization happening in uh, in its molecule. So uh, it can uh, retain itself in the reaction, uh, and uh, that is why it acts as a good leaving group because of being stabilized by the resonance. So like halides. The tosylate leaving group is displaced by a wide variety of other nucleophiles. As I told you here, that instead of a halide, you can use a hydride or or many other nucleophiles. So let's have a look. Uh, the following reactions in the next uh, slide they show the generality of the SN2 displacements of tosylates, and in each case, R must be a primary or unhindered secondary alkyl group if substitution is to predominate over elimination. Let's have a look here. So, if you have uh, uh, an ROTS, this is alkyl tosylate, and you can use a variety of nucleophiles um, for getting different kind of desired products. One important thing here is the R should be a primary um, or unhindered secondary alkyl group. There should not be any big hindrance or a tertiary group so that the uh, nucleophile cannot come from the backside to attack on the carbon. Uh, that is why um, uh, an SN2 displacement will occur if R is an unhindered atom, uh, an unhindered group. So if you use hydroxide as a nucleophile uh, with this uh, reactant, you will get an alcohol. If you use a cyanide, you will get a nitrile. If you use a halide, you will get an alkyl halide. If you use an alk oxide, you will end up with an ether. And if you use ammonia, you will get an amine salt. And uh, our concern uh, in this lecture is if you use a hydride agent, you will get an alkane where the uh, carbon oxygen bond will be replaced by a carbon hydrogen bond. The next method uh, for reduction of uh, alcohol is, so we have studied uh, about first two methods uh, by direct, uh, by dehydrating the alcohols and then the second was by changing the OH group into a good leaving group and then reducing the um, that part. The next method for reducing an alcohol is by using metallic reagents as catalysts. The direct reduction of an alcohol to the corresponding alkane remains relatively uncommon. Typically, the alcohol is first converted into a more labile group. The exception to this is the reduction of benzylic alcohols, which depending to some extent on how electron rich the arene is, arene means the benzene group attached to that. Uh, they have been reduced by a wide range of reagents and catalysts. Uh, if you look at benzylic alcohols, they can be reduced by using a wide variety of reagents and catalysts. So, we have uh, a handful of uh, catalysts that those include sodium cyanoborohydride uh, with zinc iodide. Uh, we have lithium aluminum hydride and samarium iodide 
we have triethylsilane used with trifluoroacetic acid and uh, we also have hydrogenation using palladium oxide so let's have a look at the example given below which uh, is an exception to the uh, common generalization that alcohol cannot be converted directly uh, to the uh, alcohol cannot be reduced directly to the alkane part uh, in this reaction, if you use this uh, cyanoborohydride with zinc iodide, uh, you can reduce this alcohol directly to an alkane and you get 84% diastereomeric, diastereoisomeric excess, mean you get uh, a very high yield of this diastereoisomer. Similarly, we have uh, many other reactions where you can see that uh, we can use different uh, other uh, reducing agent which we just described on this slide and uh, we can get the desired product we can get the direct um, reduction of the alcohol part in these different compounds so in the first example if you look that we have uh, an alkyl portion on this benzene ring where there is an OH group and then we have a direct OH on the benzene ring. So this OH is uh, is not an alcohol part. This is a, a substituent on the benzene ring. The beauty of this reaction is that uh, we can selectively reduce the, uh, the alcohol uh, in this reaction without altering or without disturbing this OH on the benzene ring. So if you use lithium aluminum hydride in this case, you can get this desired product you can see that the alcohol portion is reduced and uh, uh, the oxygen is replaced by a hydrogen in the second example you again see that uh, we can reduce this oh group uh, by using the samarium iodide uh, with uh, hexamethyl phosphoramide as a solvent with tetrahydrofuran and uh, um, we get the desired product where uh, alcohol is reduced to an alkyl part. Similarly, we have uh, such type of molecule where we can use the triethylsilane with trifluoroacetic acid and we can reduce the OH group uh, on the alkyl chain to an alkyl group. We can replace the oxygen by hydrogen. And uh, of course, we can use the palladium oxide catalyst as well. And you can see that it has also selectively reduced the alcohol portion uh, in this complex molecule. So these were the examples uh, which are exceptions to the uh, general rule that alcohols cannot be directly oxidized and uh, they need to be converted to some labile groups like uh, a tosylate ester or they need to be hydrated first so using these kind of different um, specific catalysts you can achieve direct reduction of alcohols next is the reduction of carbonyl compounds the most common sources of the hydride nucleophile are lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride so these are the most common compounds which you will encounter in organic synthesis uh, that they are used to reduce the uh, carbonyl compounds and uh, carboxylic acids etc. It is important to note that the hydride ion is not present during this reaction uh, rather these reagents serve as a source of hydride due to the presence of a polar metal hydrogen bond. So in these reaction, a hydride ion is not present as uh, a proton is present in acidic media. Rather, uh, how ha it happens that these uh, agents, they have a hydride uh, atom which they give whenever needed and, uh, and due to the uh, polarity difference of hydrogen and the metals attached to it. So in these cases, the polarity of hydrogen is uh, the electronegativity of hydrogen is more than boron, aluminium and lithium. That is why a hydride can be given out by these reagents. Because uh, aluminium is less electronegative than boron, um, the electronegativity of boron is uh, 2.04 I believe and the electronegativity of aluminium is 1.61. So uh, like, uh, aluminium is less electronegative than boron. That is why Al hydrogen bond in lithium aluminum hydride is more polar 
thereby making lithium aluminum hydride a stronger reducing agent than NaBH4. So you can see uh, in this uh, slide that uh, this is NaBH4, this is lithium aluminum hydride. So they are a source of uh, hydride ion which uh, is actually the reducing uh, the reason of the reduction here in these reactions. Addition of a hydride ion to an aldehyde or ketone gives an alk oxide anion which on protonation yields the corresponding alcohol. So we get first the alk oxide ion uh, and then we protonate it to get the uh, corresponding alcohol. So aldehydes produce primary alcohols and ketones produce secondary alcohols. So um, you have a look at this aldehyde when you reduce it with a hydride donor you get a primary alcohol in this case so here is the hydrogen which is coming from the uh, hydride donor but if you use a ketone you have two r groups here you will get a secondary alcohol in this case and so this this is the beauty of these reaction that you can tune uh, the product by using the respective kind of reactant in these cases. In the metal hydride reductions, the resulting alk oxide salts are insoluble and they need to be hydrolyzed uh, definitely with care uh, before the alcohol product can be isolated. So you know that uh, the, there are different uh, metals used in these reagents and uh, they, their salts need to be separated from the product that is the alcohol. So in the sodium borohydride reduction, the methanol solvent system achieves uh, its hydrolysis automatically. So methanol um, does the hydrolysis part in the case of sodium borohydride reduction. But in the case of lithium aluminum hydride, uh, we need to use water to uh, add the in the second step uh, for the uh, hydrolysis process. So the lithium, sodium, boron and aluminium, these metals and uh, they end up as soluble uh, and inorganic salts at the end of either reaction which can be separated from the alcohol. So lithium aluminium hydride and sodium borohydride they are both capable of reducing aldehydes and ketones to the corresponding alcohol. So here is an aldehyde. If you use sodium borohydride in the presence of methanol you get the respective alcohol and uh, then you have a ketone which can be easily reduced by using lithium aluminum hydride and in the second step using water for the hydrolysis of the alk oxide ion generated and then you will end up with the uh, secondary alcohol so we will have a look at the mechanism of uh, lithium aluminum hydride reduction the mechanism for NaBH4 reduction is same except the methanol is proton source used in the second step in NaBH4 and in, in this case uh, we will be using water molecule for the proton source. So the, the rest of the mechanism is same. So here we have a lithium aluminum hydride which uh, gives a hydride ion to the this uh, positive center in the carbonyl compound that is an aldehyde or a ketone and uh, the bond to oxygen here is broken so we have got an alk oxide ion here which needs protonation now in case of sodium borohydride methanol will be present as a solvent which will protonate it but in the case of lithium aluminum hydride we need to use water uh, so in this way this alk oxide ion is protonated to deliver the alcohol and the lithium will and get attached to this OH and produced um, and uh, will be um, produced as a soluble uh, salt which can be separated from the alcohol. Next is reduction of carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids can be converted to primary alcohols using lithium aluminum hydride. It is important to note that NaBH4 is not strong enough to convert carboxylic acids or esters to alcohol. So we can use NaBH4 for aldehydes and ketones but we cannot use NaBH4 to reduce carboxylic acids or esters because it's not strong enough. An aldehyde is produced as an intermediate during this reaction. If you use a carboxylic acid and reduce it with the lithium aluminum hydride, it is converted to an aldehyde 
and you know that aldehydes are even more reactive than the carboxylic acids so that will be further reduced to an alcohol so at the end you will get an alcohol you will not end up at an aldehyde stage when you use lithium aluminium hydride because it's a very powerful reducing agent it will first reduce the carboxylic acid to an aldehyde and then aldehyde to a to the alcohol the reduction of esters can also be achieved using lithium aluminium hydride um, and not with sodium borohydride so if we have an ester we use uh, lithium aluminium hydride and uh, then we hydrolyze in the second step with water we get the respective primary alcohol so this was all about the reductions where an oxygen is replaced by a hydrogen atom now i have some exercise for you you have to uh, predict the products of the following reactions and uh, uh, you will solve these two questions they are good for your practice and uh, if you have any questions or if you don't understand anything you can ask your teachers in the google classroom and uh, i hope that you all stay safe here are some references um, that were consulted for the preparation of this lecture and uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, best of luck to all and uh, allah hafiz